let's take a look at an example uh, that's really useful that we can we can do that requires a knowledge of string comparisons. So what we've got here is a big piece of text. Um, I'm going to print it out here. So we're going to print out my text. Take a look at what we've got. Okay, so this is the first paragraph uh, from Charles Dickens' uh, Tale of Two Cities. So it's pretty, it's pretty long. Uh, you can use anything for this. Uh, just Google search some paragraph from some book. Uh, it's, of course, easier to find uh, super duper famous books text. Um, that's why I use this. So anyway, what we're going to do is we are going to create two different, um, two different parts of this that are going to count how many times a letter shows up inside the text and how many times uh, a, a full word or a piece of text shows up. So um, what we're going to need to do here is uh, we'll create some more variables. So uh, string, uh, we'll do a letter count. This will be the letter we are counting. Uh, so this is the letter to count. And we'll do a string, uh, let's call this one string count. So this one can be any size, um, any size. And this is our to count one. Uh, now what we'll also do is we'll have a counter here. Um, whenever you are using a counter, don't forget to initialize the value. So we'll have it start at zero. And now what we'll do is we'll prompt the user for a letter to enter. So system.out.print enter a letter to be counted. Now I'm not going to, I'm just going to prompt the user for a string here because frankly that's easier. Uh, if they give us a whole string, I mean the program will crash. We'll just assume they're entering a letter. So uh, letter count gets the value of input dot next line. Okay, so now we're ready to count it. So for int i becomes zero. So whenever we are doing a count, we're going to be doing something called uh, traverse the string. So traverse means go from beginning to end. What we actually do, so in this case, we're, we're making a search for something. Sometimes you're changing values as you go through, but this is a, a general idea for how to traverse a string. Traversing is going to be very important for other things that we'll be doing uh, with arrays as well later. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go while i is less than or equal to, now we want to go from the beginning to the end. So this represents the beginning. The end represents uh, is represented by my text dot length. Now I've made an error here. So uh, if you already know what the error is, you can, uh, you can fix it. But we're going to come across it. It's important to make errors from time to time um, because that will help you when you um, when you're working on an even more complicated program so what we've got is we've got this set up so it's going to start at position zero and then every time it goes through the loop the position is going to change so it'll become one then and then two and then so on and so on and so on all the way to the end so what we're going to do, we're going to check to see if um, letter count. Uh, now we can't do this. You can't make a comparison with the equal sign because this is an abstract data type. You need a method uh, that you have created or that's already built in to make the comparison. So we're going to use dot equals. Okay, uh, pay close attention to how many parentheses you're going to have at the end here because it's going to be a lot. 
So what we want to do is we want to check to see if uh, letter count dot equals. Now this isn't uh, my text. That's not right. So we don't want to compare our letter to the entire thing. We want to compare it to a portion of it. So whenever you're talking about a portion of a string, it's dot substring. So my text dot substring, and then in parentheses, we say, well, uh, now what part of this are we actually going to look at? So the first time we go through, on the very first one, we want to go from 0 to 1. So 0 comma 1 will give us this character, because it starts at position 0, and then it includes all the way up to, but not position one. So it'll just be this one. Now, obviously, the next time we go through the loop, that's not going to work because we've got to look at position one then. So it's always going to be from i to i plus one. This is going to be uh, how that'll work. Now, if the letter that they entered is the same as this single letter substring of my text, then we are going to go counter plus plus. We're going to add one to the counter. So when we're done, system.out.println, uh, we'll go letter count to display the letter. Uh, we will add on an equal sign. And then we'll add on our counter so that we can see uh, what the count of that letter was. So let's take a look. And I'm going to have an error here, by the way. So enter a letter to be counted. I'm going to put in, let's check how many A's there are. So I'm going to put in an A. Now we got our string index out of bounds exception. So that happens every time we try to reference a position in the string that does not exist. So here's where that happened. Um, zero is fine. It goes to position one, then two, then three, then four, then five. Now remember that this tells us how many characters are in the string, but it doesn't give us the last position in the string. So a string with a length of 100 doesn't go from 1 to 100, it goes from 0 to 99. So we have to go minus 1 so that we don't go past the end. So we'll run this again. And we'll put in uh, A. Now, oh, I accidentally printed that afterwards. Um, this printout was supposed to be at the beginning of the program. I'm just going to switch this up here. Just a little bit of formatting here. Okay, let's run that again. So I'm going to count the uh, A's. So I get a count of 28 A's in this text. Um, you can also do useful things like uh, if you wanted to count how many spaces, it's 119, which gives you a rough estimate that there are 119 words in this almost. Uh, that's not entirely correct. You can uh, also look for the amount of capital I's, which is only this one at the beginning. Now let's advance this. Let's reset our counter to zero. And instead of a letter to be counted, we're going to say enter a string to be counted. So we're implying that they're going to be entering some text. And we will go string count. OK. So now I'm going to copy and paste this. And we'll make some adjustments. So now we're going to be, uh, this is the second version. So letter count has to get switched for string count. OK. Now, uh, 
this is uh, still my text. We're still using my text. We're still going to need a substring. So I'll run the program. And uh, let's take a look at the letter A. And then I'm going to put in the word time. Uh, now what it's doing is it says somehow that the times that the word time shows up are zero. And we can see it here. We can see it here. So there's something wrong with this. So what is happening here is we aren't getting a full word out of this. We're only getting one character at a time. So the substring has to be longer. We're going to make the substring length match the length of whatever they typed in. So this is going to be, instead of going plus one, we're going to go um, enter, oh, oh no, uh, plus string count uh, dot length. Length. There we go. So now, instead of being one character, say uh, in the case of time, it's going to go in the first one from zero to position four. So that'll be like from zero to position four. So it's two, one, two, three. So this will be the length of what it'll look like. And then when it goes one, two, three, four, it won't register. And then one, two, three, four, it won't register. And then one, two, three, four, it will. So it's going to count that. So let's run this again. Uh, and I'm going to put in the word time. Oh, sorry, that was for the letter. Obviously, that's not going to work. We'll put in time. Oh my gosh, we have the string index out of bounds exception yet again. So here's how that happened. Um, what is happening is a little bit different. It's this line that's crashing it now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out, just so that you can see it, you don't have to print this line of code. So system.out.print uh, ln, and I'm going to take this substring so that we can see what it's taking a look at on every line. So I'll run this. Hopefully that didn't cause an error. All right, all right. So let's check for A's and then let's look for time. OK. So you can see it is looking through every four letter segment in this entire thing and it does go to the end however it keeps going after this so what it's trying to do after this is trying to look at l y period and then something and then it's trying to look at y period something something and then period something 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 and then a bunch of nothing so what we have to do is we have to get this to end earlier and this case, we put a minus one here for a single letter. What we want to do is we want to make an adjustment based on the length, again, of our string. So this is going to be minus string count dot length. And then if I run this, so I'm going to put in the letter A, and then I'll put in time. And now it works properly. This is the last four character segment that it checks, and then it stops running the program. Um, so the most important thing in this program is this concept of traversing the, uh, the string, because we're going to use this for a whole bunch of uh, different applications.